All right, so I'm going to show you the model that we use to understand conflict. And this is also based on, um, we're going to take a look at what are your results from completing that conflict resolution uh, analysis that you did online. All right, so what we want to do is um, understand listening competence. So we're going to wrap up listening competence, and that's going to help you to recognize how important, accurate, effective listening plays in how you resolve conflicts. Because that is oftentimes the biggest breakdown in communication is that people are not listening to each other, all right, and what they're saying and what they're not saying. All right, so we're going to look at how do you listen better. We're going to wrap up that chapter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to segue into how does that apply to the conflict model, your go-to way of handling conflict what you're going to see is either productive or not productive. And given what is your go-to, what do you want to work on? All right. So, oh, training development. That's a really good thing. And you'd be good in training development. If you like to talk, you'd be good. All right. I, I was talking about what kind of things you can do with a degree in communication and you can get a lot of fantastic jobs. So, I mean, I traveled the world. You know, I was doing workshops in Singapore and Puerto Rico and all throughout Canada. And, um, I went to Austria, uh, Austria. I went to you know, all kinds of cool places to teach. So, um, all right. So, in your textbook, everybody open up your textbook, your online book. I want you to scroll down to page 101. Scroll down to page 101. And on this page, you're going to see that there are ways that we can improve your competence. Now remember that competence simply means that you have the skills and the abilities, all right, and that you understand the emotional intelligence that we've talked about before of how to utilize those skills and those talents, all right, and how to apply the knowledge. So listening competence means that you are able to do a lot of um, managing the process of what are you hearing, okay? So, and, and I'm terrible at it. You know, I'm always asking you to repeat yourself in this class. And part of the problem is I'm, I am used to watching your lips. So um, it's really hard for me to not see mouths move to see what the words are. And I think I have to get my hearing fixed because I'm getting old. Okay. So I think those are all contributors to why um, I struggle a little bit with listening. All right, so remember that we have this process of communication. So there's a speaker, right? And there is a listener, right, a receiver. The speaker has an idea or a feeling that is encoded, created a language that the receiver is going to understand. You remember that model from way back at the beginning of the class, all right? The goal then is for the receiver, hopefully, to decode, all right, that message accurately so that there is shared understanding of what the speaker is trying to communicate, right? And remember that there's different models, that there might be feedback or no feedback. Hopefully there's feedback. That's the, the rich type of thing. All right. Well, at each of those processes, all right, there is an opportunity for a person to not listen or to not hear correctly. 
And one of those could be the channel that you're using. Okay. How many times have you said something on a text and you're going, shit, shit, shit. I should have said that in person. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or you picked up the telephone and you called somebody when you were angry and you're going, crap. I should have calmed down before I picked up that telephone. All right. Okay. We're all been there. So, oh, no. Uh, well, I'm old school. I still use the phone. All right. So what you have to do is to recognize that there are methods that you can apply to improve your listening behaviors at the different stages of that process. So it might be in how you are receiving it, all right? Um, and this is excellent study skills information. If you have trouble taking notes in a classroom, this prepares you to be a better student. So just think about it. When you walk through that door, you put on your mental, I'm here to listen, mentality. Right? You put on that hat. Um, you start to listen to what's important and what's not important. Anytime somebody writes something on the board, it's important. Right? Rule number one. Um, you're going to be mindful of the process. I mean, so there's all this information you can read on your own. Now, at the interpreting stage, that's where you are decoding. Okay? You want to write this down to kind of get the connection of what it means. When you are decoding the message, when you are interpreting what it is the person is saying, you are looking for additional clues that the person might be saying. All right, so what's the body language that goes with the words? Um, you may be looking at the culture, all right? So in order to decode it, and Tony's going to give us some excellent information, and, and the rest of you as well, when you're looking at your cultures that you're studying for the term project, how do you listen correctly for that culture? All right? Um, and be aware of different meanings of silence. Silence is golden. The 1960s song that says that. Silence can be wonderful. Don't think that silence is scary. Silence simply means that the person on the other end is processing. It might mean they're processing something completely different from what you're talking about, which is another problem. <coughs> But it means that they're not ready to respond. So silence is okay. Silence is sometimes an excellent response, especially in a fight. Um, then in the evaluating stage. Now, I want you to look at number four, and I want you to look at number eight. A4. You guys are audience members in a classroom. And when you're watching TV, and when you are surfing the internet, and you are looking at your Instagram, etc., you have an obligation on number four where it says separate facts from inferences, judgments, opinions, etc. Make sure you're not listening to bullshit. Hopefully none of you subscribe to conspiracy theory. Oh, right? And that you are listening for truth. And you're listening for truth based on that person being an expert or being educated or trained or lots of experience in the field. Right? So that's an important part. There's more there too. And then in the responding stage, and this is where we are going to segue into the conflict, if there is something that you disagree with, is, you know, ask appropriate questions. I'm going to give you some skill sets. I'm going to give you some things to say to help you do that. And I just completed a six-week course. Um, actually, it was a, a, a book club with faculty and staff on campus. Uh, white people and black people, and it was on the the book White Fragility, and it was powerful. 
And it was powerful because although I understood intellectually about the difficulties of the African American experience, I heard directly from people about their experiences. And boy, did it make me have to sit back and take some stock in my own racism. And it's hard. It was very good. And it's a work in progress. Right? Because one of the things that we agreed to do as members of this first cohort on campus is that we are going to do what's called, um, I'm just going to say, interrupt racism when it happens. And that it can also translate into interrupt sexism when it happens or other isms when they happen, but specifically racism. So when, um, as a faculty member, if a student says something in the class, um, we are going to interrupt and help to coach that student to understand what was said and what's meant behind it. Um, and our family members, oh my gosh, when I think back at my dinner table conversations when I was growing up, and interrupt those racist comments. Okay, so that's all part of what responding means. What's the social obligation? What's the obligation to you as parents or grandparents? What's the so? What's the um, big responsibility? What's the responsibility for you as a member? All right. When do you take that moment to interrupt and stop in a kind way? So remember the fake card that I gave you? You the same card. And that's what that's about. All right. Now, I want you to learn about something called active listening. Versus passive listening. Active listening means that you're going to ask me questions or that you're going to give me feedback. I'm always looking back here because Stephanie is giving me amazing feedback and so is Tony. Remember I said this the other day. All right. Oh, and you do it occasionally as well. And Cody does once in a while. All right. That is extremely powerful in demonstrating that we are actively engaged. That means that I know you are listening and you're not out there in all of it. <laughs> so don't be out there in all of it. All right? Passive means you're just sitting there pretending. Remember we talked about the pseudo listening. All right? And we don't want to do that. Active listening can also be helpful by doing this. If you don't understand what I'm saying, or you want further clarification, or you'd like to see some examples, question your instructors. Excellent. Using the data. All right? Yeah, I mean, because you can get by with so much of your time. All right, so what you'll want to do is to have a dialogue even with your professors in your class. If you see my textbooks, or if you even see the book that I was just telling you about, I write in my books like crazy. I know you guys have an online book, but you can make online notes in that text. You can annotate in the online book. I know that Tony actually has a printout of that book. You can do that. That's having a conversation with the author. All right? So ask questions and or make comments. Agree. Don't agree. And relate to your real world experiences. So if the author gives you an example of something, 
then relate it to the real world. I try and do that with us in our class. Um, so in this section here, there's more information about um, how to coach, how to reinforce, how to question. Um, there's lots of ways to remember information, like mnemonic devices, which is why I love the thing, because it's got that little acronym to help me remember things. Rhyme, visualizations, anything that helps you. Everybody's a little bit different. I like pictures. So all my uh, notes are always in pictures. And then, of course, note-taking. Um, note-taking, we know, creates the cybernetic processing that imprints the information on your brain. And, and it translates to active listening. All right. Um, the rest I'm not going to cover because you're going to cover this in your term projects. So this would be excellent pages to include in your bibliography and in your term project about listening. All right? So I recommend that you put in your notes pages 107, 108, um, and 109 that they become direct points of reference in your term project for how to communicate with people from a different culture. All right, questions about that? Make sense? Good. Okay. So let's see what kind of conflict people you are. <laughs> oh yes. All right. Now, now I'm going to give you a modification of the model that's in your book. If you look in your book on page, um, 113, you definitely want to know these definitions for your test. Okay? And I'm going to give you a modification of this. So let me tell you, we begin at the beginning. And I'm going to say something that many of you are going to say, no way, Miss K. So eyes on me. Conflict is good. Conflict is healthy. Conflict is necessary for change, growth, improvement. Without conflict, we have status quo. The same old, same old. Without conflict, people don't question. They don't pursue, they don't explore, they don't research. With conflict, we step back and we start to take a new look. Conflict is a signal, anger, frustration, and emotion around the conflict is a signal to your brain and your heart that something's not right. It's not right. It's not working. For whatever reason, you have a reaction that says something needs to give. I don't know what it is yet. And you don't want to jump to conclusions because jumping to conclusions can cause you problems. But recognizing that there is the potential for a big conflict or, there is, or a little conflict or disagreement or what have you is the first opportunity for improvement and growth. You got that? Everybody got, is with me, right? So I'm not going to beat that dead horse. So what I'm going to do, though, is demonstrate reasons why. So... If you look at 111, I'm going to give you marriage counseling right now. Any other married people except that you're married, right? 
All right, anybody else in relationships? Okay, I'm going to give you counseling right now. This is what you do. Actually, this is what you don't do. On page 111. All right. On page 111. These are stoppers in conversations. These are going to prevent a person from listening. These are going to prevent you from moving forward in your relationship. All right. If you use a globalized, generalized label on a person, if you say to a person, you are a liar, conversation's over. Not going to be defensive. There's no opportunity for talking. If you were to say, oh, yeah, no, you, you go right ahead, you do whatever you want, I, I won't say a word. Like hell. Right? If you are sarcastic. Um, oh, I, and I love their example. You didn't miss it. Nothing makes, nothing, nothing makes my heart boil faster than when a student says, I miss class. Did I miss anything? <laughs> okay, right now. Right? That's like, I am now going to offend my professor. That email offends every professor. So don't ever send that email. Okay, what? Yeah, or, or did I miss anything important too? Or they'll, they'll qualify it. And, and, and it's not thinking, it's not using the think before they speak. Okay. Dragging up the past. Oh my gosh, I used to be queen at this one. Okay. Well, this is what you did the last time and the time before that. And every time you go out with those buddies, this is what happens. So remember the last time you went out? I mean, and remember the third time you went out last month with those buddies? You don't drag up the past. Or um, we're in financial debt because you bought this. Or we are uh, not going on vacation because you spent all the money on Christmas. Okay? That's bringing up the past, and that's not going to make for a healthy dialogue. Okay? The past is the past behind us. Negative comparisons. Well, your brother would never do something like that. Yeah. I see, I, I'm using all my real experiences. So you guys can all hear the conflicts in my family and my 40 plus years of marriage. And my husband has an older brother. Well, Randy would never have done that. But why would you do that? Okay, so comparing, especially to somebody where it's going to be a hot button for the person. Now, I said this earlier. You want to stick with I language. Don't say you, 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 you. Because you makes a person feel, look at me, excuse me, like, my point or two is a really bad. You know, I can, I know, look at I'm doing all the things not to do. All right. Um, so, yes, don't use the you. Um, always use the I. And then threats. Well, if you don't change, I'm going to leave you. Or if you don't do this, um, you're going to get enough. Or if you don't, you know. So the threats are not healthy. Not it's exactly what that is. And when you give a person an open, what's the person's response? Yeah. Defensive and try it. Yeah. Try it. Yeah. And so it I mean it's just it's so unhealthy in a relationship. So unhealthy. All right. And I'm just using romantic. So imagine if you're doing it with your kids. Don't do any of these things with your kids, especially teenagers. Oh, these are not good. These are discussion stoppers with teens. Um, an employee who works with you or works for you, all about a demotivator. Right? So all of these are things that you should just kind of like erase from your brain. Keep this book, you know, this book is free to you forever and ever and ever. And if you need to look up something before you have a conversation with somebody, you can look at these. 
All right, now, on page 113, it gives you a model, but I'm going to give you a different model. And I'm going to give you a little bit different perspective on this, and I'm going to give it to you from an organizational development paradigm. And that paradigm is based on working on in business relationships as well as family relationships. All right? So this is what I'm going to draw. We're going to have one axis that goes this way, another axis that goes this way, one that goes this way, and one this way, and another one that goes this way. Now, I'm going to put up here the labels of what you said you are. All right? So, uh, Kaylee. All right, well, here, let me do it this way before I throw you under the bus. All right, so this is what's known as accommodating. All right, this is an axis, and this is zero at the core. This is a hundred, a hundred, one hundred, and then this goes to zero again, one hundred, and this is one hundred. All right. Um, this one is competing. Notice the ings. This one is avoiding. Um, this one is compromising. And this one is collaborating. All right. So what does the ING mean? Why am I saying notice the INGs? Yes, it's exactly it. It's a doing. It's a behavior. Exactly. Excellent, Portia. So with that, what you're saying is that when you are faced with conflict, you have a go-to. Remember I said, what is your typical go-to? So do you remember your reports? Everybody got your reports? Do you remember what your numbers are? Okay. So you have a, a number one, your highest number. So I'm only going to look at the number one, the highest number. All right. But you also had a secondary number and a third number, etc. Right? The number one number is what we call your go-to. So this is under most circumstances. This is the one, remember with your hand like this, that you are the most comfortable going to. Now it doesn't mean you have to all the time, because you can change it up and you can, you know, play hokey hokey pokey and change up your your things like that. So let me now put in our labels. Okay. Who is who? All right. So let's start. Okay. So Tony is okay. You are accommodating. That is Tony. Good. And Haley is also here. All right. William is here. Portia is here. Zach is here. Stephanie is here. Cody is up here. And oh, Quentin, Quentin, did you do it by any chance? No, I don't know. I'm You're avoiding. And Michael, by any chance, did you get yours done? Yeah, it's uh, avoiding. Avoiding? 
That makes me feel better because I didn't have anybody on this one. So thank you for doing it. Okay. Um, now, I want you to all look at these and I want you to kind of, because the assignment was to check in to see if this accurately represented who you think you are when you're going to. All right. So would you say this true? All right, pretty much this is your comfortable go-to. All right, you ready for this? I am now going to give you new names. Now, you may have seen these before. I want you to pay attention. These new names I'm going to give you. Are you ready? You are a teddy bear. <laughs> You are turtle. <laughs> right, well, you can tell that's turtle, right? Mm -hmm. All right. These are foxes, and these are owls. What what animal do you think is competing? Ooh, the rabbit. What? The rabbit? The turtle and the rabbit? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay. Oh. All right. The sharks. Oh, back to the sharks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, what that means is I'm going to give some. Um, Pros and cons for both, all right, or for all of them, because each one of those have strengths and opportunities that are situationally based, okay? So just as we talked earlier about emotional intelligence, the emotionally intelligent person to handle a conflict is going to know when this style is a good style to be. And you all noticed that you had additional numbers. So like Tony said, Tony, what was your second number? 31, okay. So, so you have a second number. So that means you know how to go into those other ways of being, okay, of behaving and acting. Um, so sometimes you may want to step back and think before you act to select the appropriate animal. All right, now let's start with, um, we're going to start with an owl. An owl is characterized as collaborating, but we actually have very few owls in the world. Collaborate means that they want to work with everybody to come to a very happy ending for all. Okay. Happy ending for all. All right. Now, the happy, including yourself, by the way. Collaborators also want themselves to be happy in this. Now, what do you think would be a pro for collaborating, given what I just said? World peace. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and what would be a con? If you use this style, what would be the con? And why don't we have world peace? Impossible. Say that? Too much conflict? Too much conflict? Well, it's impossible. I'm going to go back to the impossible. Why do you think it's impossible? We're all. Okay. On the right track, Quentin? Because there's a lot of self-centeredness. Yeah. And so they're all, you know, what's in it for me? All right, good. Yes? Lots of competing with little compromise. Lots of competing with very little compromise. Okay, good. Okay, here's the practical reason. This takes time. And to your 
point, your point, your point, your point, it also takes a lot of energy. And sometimes we just don't have it, do we? We just don't have it. So you are an owl, and it takes a lot of time and energy, but is it hard to accomplish? Yeah, it is. And, and so the effort sometimes is like, you know, is this really worth it? All right? Yeah. So we start to ask ourselves, what's the return on investment? So we don't have world peace because what would we do with militaries? We love militaries. If we have world peace, would we need military? Do we need military for the economy? Are you sure? We do, all right? Because after every great war, there is a great what? There's, well, there's a great a lot of money generated, okay? So economically, we do well worlds after wars are won, not lost. Won. Political science. What? War period. Yeah, war period. All right. Okay, so I'll save a lot of time and a lot of energy. And in the business world or even in your family, this is difficult to achieve. So it's not impossible, but it's hard. It's not impossible. It's, it depends on the issue. So, now, so if that's going to be really, really tough, right here in the middle, and you can see where it is in your model, what are the pros and cons about being a fox? Being foxy, being compromising. By, by the very nature, okay, this translates into we all win. This is going to translate into I win and lose something, and you win and lose something, right? So a compromise, Stephanie is loving this right now, because a compromise is then, look, it, we have to give a little to get a little, right? And so it is the, since this is, you know, not achievable and the others are not really going to be productive, let's compromise, right? Yeah, is this easier than this? Yes, it's easier to achieve. As long as there's good listening, and we're not doing just listening for ourselves, like Quentin said. Well, although there is going to be some of that too, because honestly, you know, we don't want to just be left out. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to follow along the axis, and I'm going to put avoiding out here. Turtles, what's a pro and a con for Quentin and Michael? What, why do they feel comfortable about being turtles? Why do you guys like being turtles? Why do you like to avoid conflict? It's easy? So it's easy. All right. Less stressful. Less stressful <laughs> at the moment. Okay, so it's less stress. Would you say that to be avoiding, are you being active or passive? Okay, you're definitely being passive. All right? And you are also being what's known as passive aggressive. All right? Which means I'm going to do nothing, which means, guess what? I'm in control. My bonus is that too. I do nothing and demonstrate. I'm still in control. Okay. Now, let me tell you. Turtles can be, that's why they're on the opposite here, but they're actually kind of connected. A turtle can be very smart and very wise. All right? Because a turtle will know that it is a temporary solution. If they operate under that mentality, that means then that they know, you know what? This is not the time or place. I'm going to remain silent, and I'm going to wait for the right time to have this discussion. Now, if the turtle then follows up and has that discussion, then that's excellent. Then you're dealing with it. If you never have it, then you're just being passive-aggressive. And you're never going to get things resolved. 
Okay, because you have to talk in order to get resolution. So remember, the whole goal here is to resolve a conflict for improvement, for change, for growth, development. Okay. All right. Now, oh my teddy bears. So if this is I win, you win, and um, you know I win and you win, and we both lose. Hurdles. If they're not in, if they just do this part, they don't even play in the game. They don't play. So this is where everybody wins, you know, like everybody gets a trophy at the end, no matter what your final scores were. This one is, okay, I win a few, I got second place, okay, I understand. Teddy bears, are you ready? You're gonna be surprised. <laughs> this is I always. No, no, you don't have to do that. It's more of like, hey, you win. Yeah. No. Oh. It's okay, okay, you win. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, that isn't the you. All right. All right. And so, okay, a little sarcasm maybe there. <laughs> Teddy, bears. <laughs> Teddy bears are punching bags. They were that strong though, you see? No, 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 they will eventually get punched and fall apart. Teddy bears, um, Teddy bears take it and take it and take it. And it's more. And theirs is, you know, I just want peace. I just want to make whoever is attacking me at the moment just be happy. You see this in abusive relationships a lot. Yeah. This is an abusive relationship. So there's going to be somebody who's going to be the victim. I'm using some harsh words here on purpose. Yes, you are. Like everybody else, you're like, you're good. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. There's a reason. There's a wow. reason. There's a reason. If this is a really high number and you are always this, here's what happens. It's like a pressure cooker. You take it, and you take it, and you take it until you say, I'm like mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> and then it's going to be you, you fly. You're out. Or you explode. The expression of going postal. All right, Kaylee's shaking her head. She knows. <laughs> All right, so she's, she's relating to this. So, yeah, you just take and take until you get to the point you say, okay, no, I'm out. And, and oftentimes they will leave a situation and the poor person involved. What happened? Was always so happy. Was always so accommodating. I didn't know there was something wrong. Right? And so oftentimes the, the person who's not the victim is left with what happened? Confused. I'm not done yet. All right, duck. <laughs> Here it comes. In order for us to have victims, Oh man. What do you have to be? Yeah. What do you have to be? Who somebody is going to be the bully. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Now the bully, you can't have a bully unless there's a victim. Yeah. All right. So this is when we look at transactional uh, communication, you got to have these two to function. So somebody is going to be a bully over this, this, these people. That bully is I win at all costs. 
Okay, I win at all costs. And that means that I'm gonna do everything it takes to win. It might be cheating, it might be bullying, it might be playing by the rules, being very aggressive, but you're gonna win at all costs, yes. I would say that uh, a lot of the start out at elementary school yard. Yes, playground. yes. It, and it actually starts before that in the home. And oftentimes when you say to a, a kid or you say to a parent, or you say to a teacher, a teacher to a teacher about this kid who behaves in class a certain way, the teachers will always say, have you watched that child's parents interact? And that's right. And so they're not in the home. So that absence of a proper modeling of behavior is not there. Yes? And by the way, you know, you're training to get to see the parents. Yeah. Say, now, I <laughs> now you understand. Exactly. Interesting. So you even saw that dynamic in the home. Yeah, you saw them between the two. And oftentimes, what, what you will do is either go to that or reject it. Exactly. And, and we always have that. Now, the thing about these is that if you are hiring, and as a human resources person, I would hire certain kinds of people. If I am fielding a team of basketball players and I want to win a championship, do I want to recruit one of these? No. All right. One of these? No. Maybe a little bit of this, but probably not that. I want a, I want a, I want a bunch of shots on my basketball team. I want competitors. It's true. If I am hiring a sales force, sales people, I'm going for those sharks. I want them to be hungry and they're going to go out and win the sales. All right. If I'm hiring, um. You know, a, a, um, if I'm hiring a financial person, a person who does the books and the numbers, I want this person, all right, who is smart enough to know this is a fight we don't need to, but if when it is time, we're going to step up and we're going to have a conversation about the budget. Okay. So there's pros and cons to all of them, and the really wise person knows when to be well. Humble, yeah. Learning. Passive or aggressive. Passive or aggressive. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry, I've kept you guys way over time. So you guys did great today. Thank you for your interaction. I'm gonna